Hello ebook makers again. So right now we are looking at the reflowable ebook um, in InDesign. What I mean by that is this is what we actually used to create the reflowable ebook. So this was my, my layout that I used. Uh, I also used the, uh, the articles panel to determine what was going to be in the reflowable ebook. As you can see, the half title actually is um, unticked. So that was what we did before. Now we can't use the articles panel anymore when we're making the fixed layout ebook. And um, as I've said in the previous episode, everything that you see on the screen is going to be exactly as you see. So uh, what we have to do now is to make uh, the pages. Um, I'll, I'll put the pages panel up here so you can see what we originally had. So as in all um, print books, you know, you're going to start with a, a, black, a single page and then you're going to have some spreads uh, and then um, this particular uh, document finishes on a spread because the next play itself, which is in a separate document, also starts on a spread. Um, but what we actually need to do is to, is to change this now. Now we're not going to need the half title. So in order to remove it, uh, we have to do certain things. So the first thing is we have to right click over this page and then we have to say that we want the um, at the moment it's uh, allowing the document pages to shuffle so I want to actually turn that off and then that will allow me to delete this page so once again right click over it delete this page or delete this spread as, as it says okay and now what happens is we then get uh, the first spread so we get a spread this is now our first spread and now we don't have a, a single page at the beginning this is what we're going to get when we export this as a fixed layout ebook um, but obviously you know we have to bear in mind that we're going to try to make this our first uh, landing page if you like in the ebook so there are certain things that we need to do now also just bear in mind um, that what's happened if you look at this little triangle here that's actually indicating that that's the first page in the document now I, I know that we're not really too concerned about the page numbering but uh, do bear in mind that um, this on the left hand side is now page one. I know that's in small Romans, but that's page one. That's not really strictly speaking correct because um, you should always have odd pages on the right hand side of the spread. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over this page and I'm going to go to numbering and section options and I'm going to start a section uh, not automatically, but I'm going to start the page numbering on page one. We we'll get a warning, of course, because we've now got two page ones, uh, but it does at least set the following pages correctly. So it means that when we look at our table of contents, ultimately when we create the ebook, we will actually have the, the correct uh, page numbers, um, at least um, to a certain extent. There are some other issues about this which we'll have to come on to a little bit later on. Okay, now let's just go to the next page, you know, the, the next spread, um, and we have to then think about the table of contents. Now we don't actually want the table of contents on the page. Uh, we want to remove that and as I said to you before we can't use the articles panel so consequently we actually what we do is we just simply remove this onto the pasteboard like this and uh, we have a second page like that so I'm actually going to put that down here uh, we can actually even make this onto one page I think but I'm not really too concerned about that it doesn't really matter that much looks like we've virtually achieved that so if we do that then we don't even need this empty document here so we've got the table of contents over here on the left hand side and, and then we've got this uh, double page spread here which we can do something with so we've got various things that we can we can reorganize now let's first of all start with this page here uh, let's first of all take this uh, portrait here uh, and I'm going to move this away from here Okay, I'm just going to zoom out so I can very easily then take this document or this, this, this group here and I'm going to move it onto this page instead. Uh, now I'm also going to move this group that I've got here for my uh, title page. I'm going to move that over onto the pasteboard. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is to place my image that I'm going to use 
Let's actually look at our little icons here. This is the object, uh, the image that I'm going to use. And I'm going to place this uh, here onto this double page spread. Like this. Now we may have to just zoom in on this a little bit because, of course, it needs to be a little bit bigger to make sure that it covers the complete. Like this, we can actually then crop it so that it just sits on the page itself. Uh, now, the one thing that you need to make use of quite a lot in this uh, exercise is how you use the layers. And if we look at the layers panel over here, <coughs> you'll see that we've actually got this layer here is over in layer number one. Um, and it's worth just bearing in mind what we've actually got in layer two. In there we've got our, you can just see the dotted line, I'll actually zoom in again, that's probably better for you. Uh, okay, so you can now see these items here are the master page items. Well, we can actually hide those by just clicking that icon there. And that's actually going to hide the, all of the items that are on that layer, like that. Um, the other way of doing it is just to make sure that we don't use these, we make sure that these things are actually, uh, instead of sitting uh, uh, on top, which they are in this layers, we actually move things around. So we can actually take this layer and put it above that, so that now those items are hidden behind the picture. Now our group, which is this object here, our, our, our cover, uh, sorry, our title page, uh, that's as you can see sitting underneath in the layers. So that needs to come up above that. Like this. Now we, what we're going to do is we're going to obviously change this uh, text because I'm going to go into each of these items here and turn that into white text. So I need to show my, my colors, my color swatch. Like that. And I'm going to make that into the color to be white. Uh, same with nights, same with midsummer, same with the letter, the letter A, which I can't quite grab at the moment. Okay, nope, that's wrong. There we are, that's the letter A. So all of that, oh, and also we mustn't forget William Shakespeare. So that whole group now can sit somewhere on the top of my, uh, my, my, my uh, basically my landing page um, cover. So I'm going to just simply open that up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger and put it somewhere so that it's, you know, contrast enough to, to read on the screen. Let's actually zoom back out again. Okay, we can obviously move these things around a little bit. So I'm going to put this down here. Uh, anyway, we can organize that uh, quite easily. Now, um, what we need to do now is to go onto our next page. So if we just really take this one page at a time. Um, bear in mind that you're really just organizing the content uh, like as we did before in page layout for print. But we can move things wherever we want them to be. Uh, we don't have to anchor images. We're not too concerned about that. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything is um, as it see as we see it here. We know that that's what we're going to get. Okay. So now what we're going to do is to uh, concentrate on this page here, or I should say this spread here. Now uh, you can um, at any time if you want add spreads uh, to put more material in, but um, I'm not actually going to do that in this particular case. I'm going to use this page here to. Uh, actually introduce this, the life of Shakespeare section of the book. Um, we've already got it, as you can see, as if it were in print. But um, my, my idea is that I'm going to take this, um, this document and actually, or th this, this page, and actually start it on the left hand side of this, uh, of this spread further down. Um, and the way that I can do that quite simply, although it seems rather um, radical, is just simply select that text box and delete it. Um, that's what that's actually done is it's actually pushed everything down onto the next spread. Um, now what I'm going to do then is on this spread I'm going to bring in my my uh, picture of Shakespeare 
with the text um, that replaces, if you like, this one here, the, the title The Life of Shakespeare. Um, however, um, I should just show you what I'm going to do. I've already um, pre-prepared something in Photoshop, which is actually layers, um, would I, which I'm going to then subsequently use. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to now go to my documents and place. So this is my assets folder here that I've uh, already prepared. And you'll see this, this, you can just see this image here. It's a PSD, so it's actually a Photoshop file. So import options, because what I want to do is to place into here two versions of this. So you can see this is the complete image that I'm ultimately uh, wanting to get. Uh, but I'm just going to actually turn off the Life of Shakespeare text like that. Um, so bear in mind that we're going to come back and, and bring that in. But at the moment, we're just taking that image as it is. And then I'm going to place this directly onto this spread. Uh, we might need to just crop it a little bit like that. OK, and now what I'm going to do is to go back and place this again. So I'm taking my Photoshop image again, make sure show import options is on. And this time I'm going to just just remind myself that that's now I want that text there. So I'm turning everything else off. So I don't want any of these things here, even the background. So in other words, I'm just going to get that entirely on its own. OK, and again, if I now place this in exactly the same place here, I should then get that, uh, that separate. Uh, image that's sitting exactly over the top. Obviously, the transparency as we had in uh, Photoshop um, should work exactly the same way. Um, now, obviously, uh, right now that's going to be fine in the ebook. It's just going to that page is as you see it there. But it is possible for us now just to take a first look at the kinds of things we can do um, to make these things a little bit more dynamic. So, what I'm going to do is to um, Presume that this image itself comes onto the screen directly. I mean, I'm not going to worry too much about that. We, we are obviously not going to do exactly the same as we have done in the original because it would take too long in the, in the screencast. But uh, that will appear initially uh, when we first come to this page. But then what I want to do is to look at this um, image here. And again, looking at the layers, we should look at the layers because we can remind ourselves of which part is what. So if we, I'll just bring this a bit nearer over here so you can actually see. So if I now um, turn that off, you'll see that's that one there. Um, and if I just double click that little blue icon there, that's actually now, we now are sure that we've selected the, the, the text, not the background image. The background image is that, do you see? If I can, I can just turn that off. So I'm actually selecting the actual, uh, text that's sitting over the top of it. Now, here comes the first time that we're going to now look at uh, our animation. So I'm just going to move this back over to here and look at our animation. Now, we, 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 we've selected that, so I'm going to now choose animation. Now, if you can't find this, you need to go to Window interactive and in that whole panel you'll see all of these features that we're going to be using as we go through building up this uh, fixed layout ebook but I've got mine up on the screen initially so I'm going to now um, choose from one of the presets uh, I'm going to just simply use fade in in this case okay so I'm fading this in uh, and if, if you look at the properties, uh, you, you, you know, you, what you need to do is to make sure that we hide this until it's animated. Uh, we've got certain things that we can change here. For a start, this is on page load. So in other words, when it comes to this page in the ebook that we're going to make, uh, it's going to happen on that, at that point. You've also got things like the duration. It's going to be one second to, to, to do that. Uh, or, and, and it's going to play it once. We only want this to play once. Um, okay, so how, I mean, we, we don't want to go through the process of actually exporting this to the ebook 
each time to have a look and see how this works? Well, we've got an answer for that. We actually do have something called the preview uh, panel. We can spread, this, look at this preview, and if we click that little icon down at the bottom left, Okay, there you see how that works. Let's just stop that again and bring that back onto the screen again. So when we come to this page, this is what we're gonna, which is what we're going to actually see. Um, now, there's going to be lots of other opportunities for us to for us to to achieve this. Let's turn that back off again. Uh, we're just going to make sure again go to the go to our layers again, which is uh, somewhere along here. Oh, it's at the bottom now, uh, and we just want to make sure that we have this correct. So that layer there is the one that we're selecting. That layer there is the one that we're actually making into animation. I think what I'm going to have to do is just to make sure. Ah, uh, yes, because we've got these two things in; they're in the same layer. So we just want to make sure we're not selecting uh, all of the layer. We just want to select this one here. I think what's happening is it's actually uh, doing doing this in the complete layer. So what I'm going to do is to move that out of there. Make a new layer. And move that into that layer. OK, so that's a little bit better. I think that's going to work better for us. So that's the layer that we've that we've selected like that. Let's just make sure turn that off and on so we can see it's actually surrounded in by green. You can see and I'm just going to go back to my uh, animation again make sure that that is going to animate um, and I'm doing that by selecting it and making sure that that's going to animate the other one shouldn't be animating let's just make sure that that works again for us right okay so now that should that should work better for us we're actually going to get that to uh, that, that to appear when we come to that screen now um, this is the first time that we've seen the interactivity preview um, window uh, or pane I should say and that really is something we're going to make use of uh, quite a lot I'm not going to go any further with this because um, this is rather becoming rather a long screencast so the next in the next episode we're going to look at a few other features such as the possibility of uh, getting interactivity on individuals individual images also to add some audio so let's uh, let's leave that as it is for the moment and we will see you in the next episode